Welcome to Relation Tales. Please like this video and subscribe Relation Tales. I was invited to my sister's wedding, but my husband wasn't, and now I understand why. I'm a 34-year-old woman, married to my husband Eric for about five years. Everything has been great between us, and we've always been close with my family, especially my younger sister Alex, who is 30. Alex recently got engaged to her fiancé, Luke, and we were excited for them. I thought Eric got along with my family well enough, and there was nothing major that stood out. But then something happened that really surprised me, and I'm still trying to understand it. A few weeks ago, I received a wedding invitation from Alex. I was really excited and looking forward to celebrating with family and catching up with everyone. The invitation was beautiful, with gold trim, making it clear that the wedding would be formal. When I opened it, I expected to see both our names, but it was just for me. That was strange. I double-checked and saw that it wasn't a mistake. There was no mention of Eric at all. At first, I thought it might be an error or a guest list issue. I didn't want to say anything to Eric right away, so I decided to find out what was going on. Quietly, I called my dad, figuring he'd know what's going on. My dad and I are pretty close, so I thought he'd be able to clear it up easily. But when I asked him about it, he seemed off. He hesitated for a second, like he was thinking about how to answer me. Then he gave me this weird, half-baked explanation about how Alex and Luke were trying to keep the guest list small and that maybe they didn't have space for plus ones. I didn't like how he said it, though. It was way too casual, like he was trying to brush it off. And honestly, it didn't sit right with me. At the time, I just let it go. I told myself that maybe I was overthinking it and I'd deal with it later. I should have trusted my gut because later turned out to be a whole mess. Eventually, I had to tell Eric about the invitation. I didn't want to hide it from him, and I figured he'd notice something was up when I didn't bring it up, so I told him. He took it pretty hard, honestly, way more than I expected. He's always been really family-oriented, and we've gone to every family event together since we got married. So, not being invited to Alex's wedding felt personal to him, like he was being left out deliberately, and I could tell he was hurt, even though he tried to play it off like he wasn't. I kept reassuring him that it was probably some kind of mistake that I de-figured out, but the more I thought about it, the more uncomfortable I got. I decided to text Alex casually like, Hey girl, just got your invite. I wanted to ask about Eric's invitation because I wasn't sure if he was invited separately or not. I didn't want to come across as confrontational in case it was just a mistake. But to my surprise, Alex didn't reply, which was strange because we usually talk all the time. A day or two went by with no response from her. I felt a knot in my stomach. I try not to make a big deal about it in front of Eric, but I knew something was wrong. The next weekend, we had a family barbecue at my cousin's house. I thought I might see Alex there and could talk to her in person. At the very least, I was hoping someone would bring up the wedding so I could get a better sense of what was going on. During the barbecue, I overheard my cousin chatting with someone about Alex and Luke's guest list, how strict they were being about who they invited. I wasn't even really paying attention until someone else mentioned that everyone's significant others were invited except for Eric. That's when I started to feel that gnawing feeling again. It wasn't just a mix-up. They had deliberately left him out. I decided right then that I needed to have a serious conversation with my parents. If they knew what was going on, they were either covering it up or didn't think it was important enough to address. So I pulled them aside later that day and asked them flat out why Eric wasn't invited. My mom tried to brush it off like it wasn't a big deal, but my dad was avoiding eye contact the whole time. He kept saying things like, it's just one day, and we don't want any drama before the wedding. That was when I knew something more was going on, and they weren't telling me the full story. Later that night, Eric asked me point blank what was up with a wedding invite. I didn't have the heart to lie to him, so I told him what I had heard at the barbecue and how Alex still hadn't responded to me. He was upset obviously, but more than that, he felt singled out like he had done something to deserve being excluded. And honestly, I didn't have any answers for him. The more I thought about it, the more I started to feel like I was missing something big. Eric wondered if maybe it was because of a disagreement he had with my dad a while back, but that seemed so minor in comparison to what was happening now. None of it made sense. The whole situation was starting to stress both of us out, and I knew I had to talk to Alex directly. It wasn't just about the wedding anymore. It was about something bigger, and I needed to find out what was really going on before things got worse. So, I decided to stop waiting and texted Alex to ask if we could meet up. 
I told her we needed to discuss the wedding and why Eric wasn't invited. After a few hours with no response, she finally replied and agreed to meet later in the week. She said she would bring Luke along too, which was fine with me, because I wanted to hear his side of the story. After days of waiting, the day of the meeting with Alex and Luke finally came. I was nervous, and so was Eric. He wanted to come with me, but I asked him not to. I needed to find out what was going on without his presence, without the emotional weight he would bring to the conversation. I also wanted to avoid making Alex or Luke feel like they were being cornered, which could make them hide even more of the truth. We met at a cafe near my parents' house, a neutral place where I hoped things wouldn't spiral out of control. Alex arrived first, and she looked uncomfortable. Luke showed up shortly after, and I could see on his face that he wasn't thrilled about this meeting. I took a sip of my coffee and took a deep breath, trying to stay calm before starting. So, Alex, I want to understand what's going on. I began, looking directly at her. Why wasn't Eric invited to your wedding? She looked down, nervously stirring her teaspoon. Luke crossed his arms and avoided making eye contact, which only fueled my frustration. I don't know how to tell you this. She began hesitantly. It's not something I wanted to come to this. What do you mean, come to this? I snapped my voice sharper than I intended. We're talking about my husband, the man I've been with for five years. Why was he excluded? Luke finally spoke, his voice dry and cold. It's because he's not welcome. That shocked me. I knew something was wrong, but hearing it said so clearly felt like a punch to the gut. Not welcome? I asked, confused. What do you mean? Alex looked at Luke, almost like she was asking for his permission to talk, and that made me really angry. Was she letting him control her? Or was something worse going on? Eric, he's part of the problem, Alex muttered, still avoiding eye contact. Luke never liked him, and some things that happened over the last few months just made things worse. What things? I demanded. I said, Eric has never done anything against you. He's always been kind and respectful to our family. I want to know exactly what's going on. Luke laughed, but it wasn't a friendly laugh. It was sarcastic, almost cruel. You know, maybe the problem is that you can't see who Eric really is. That made my anger spike. How dare Luke talk like that about my husband? What the hell do you mean by that? I shot back, my words laced with fury. Alex, visibly upset, finally lifted her gaze to meet mine. Luke thinks Eric has been hitting on me. She blurted out, and for a moment, everything around me seemed to freeze. I blinked, trying to process those words. What? My voice was barely a whisper. Are you serious, Alex? This has to be a joke. She shook her head, and tears started to fill her eyes. No, I swear it's not. Luke thinks Eric has always been interested in me. He thinks it's strange how Eric always wants to be around and stands too close at family gatherings. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I felt my anger rising. Alex, this is completely ridiculous. Eric would never do something like that. I yelled, he's your brother-in-law. He treats you like a sister. It's always been that way. Luke interrupted, he might treat you like a sister, but he looks at you like something else. You don't know him like I do. I replied, standing up from my chair, unable to sit still through these ridiculous accusations. Alex was crying now, and Luke remained impassive, like he had complete control of the situation. That's when it hit me. This wasn't about Eric. It never was. This is all just an excuse, isn't it? I asked, staring Luke down with fury. You've always hated Eric. Not because of Alex, but because he's the only one who doesn't buy into your misogynistic and manipulative garbage. He never gave you the attention you think you deserve, and now you're using my sister to push him out of the family. Luke said nothing, but the look he gave me confirmed my suspicions. He was trying to isolate Alex manipulating the situation to push away anyone who could open her eyes to what he truly was. I turned to Alex, and my heart broke seeing how deeply she was entangled in this, maybe without even realizing it. Alex, please see what's happening. This isn't about Eric. It's about control, about Luke isolating you. Don't you see he's pushing away everyone who cares about you? My voice shook with frustration. She shook her head unable to speak because she was crying. Luke put his hand on her shoulder, pretending to comfort her, but I could see he was trying to show his control over her. That's enough, Luke said, his voice cold. We're not changing our minds. Eric isn't welcome at the wedding. 
And if you can't accept that, maybe you shouldn't come either. It felt like the ground crumbled beneath me. My own sister was willing to exclude me from her wedding over a ridiculous lie planted by a controlling man. Without saying another word, I stood up and walked out of the cafe. My legs were shaking, my mind a whirlwind of emotions. When I got home, Eric was waiting anxiously. He knew I'd had an important conversation, but he had no idea what I had uncovered. When I looked into his eyes, I felt a mix of sadness and fury. What happened? He asked, worried. I told him everything. The accusations, Luke's manipulation, Alex's blindness to what was really going on. Eric was shocked, but more than that, he was devastated. Being falsely accused of something so disgusting was more than anyone could bear. They want us out of their lives, Eric, I said, my voice hoarse with frustration. And the worst part is that my own sister is letting it happen. In that moment, I decided I wouldn't go to the wedding. I couldn't support a marriage built on lies and manipulation. I cut ties with Alex and Luke, and though it was a painful decision, it was the only choice I had left. I couldn't stand by and watch my sister sink further into that toxic relationship. And so, the wedding happened without us. I heard later that the wedding was a big event, full of fake smiles and empty promises. But I wasn't there to see it. Eric and I moved on with our lives, feeling closer than ever, because we knew we had done the right thing. I still felt hurt by what happened, but I was also relieved that I didn't give in to the lies and manipulation. Life taught us that sometimes family ties aren't enough to keep a family together, and some battles need to be fought with pride and honesty. Months passed since Alex and Luke's wedding, and Eric and I kept moving forward. However, the tension from being left out of the wedding and everything that happened still lingered. I tried to push it all aside and let go of the past, but something inside me wouldn't let me fully relax. The way things ended, how my own sister pushed me away because of Luke and the unfair accusations against Eric haunted me. Over time, though, I began to notice subtle changes in Eric. He became more distant, more withdrawn. But there were moments when he seemed lost in thought, and whenever I asked him what was wrong, he'd give me vague answers like, I'm just tired or it's work stuff. At first, I believed him. After all, he had been through an emotionally draining experience too, being falsely accused and left out of the wedding. Maybe he was just processing things the way I was. But as more time passed, things felt increasingly off. Eric, who had always been affectionate and attentive, began to pull away more and more. He was constantly on his phone, receiving texts late at night, and he started taking it with him everywhere, something he had never done before. This behavior began to bother me deeply, but I tried to brush off my feelings, convincing myself that it was just paranoia from everything we had been through. Then one day, while he was in the shower, his phone buzzed with a notification. I was sitting on the bed, and without thinking much, I picked it up, my heart nearly stopped when I saw the name on the screen, Alex. The message was brief. We need to talk. My hands trembled. Why would Alex be texting Eric? They weren't supposed to be in contact after everything that had happened. With his phone still in my hand, I did something I never thought I'd do. I unlocked my phone, feeling sick as I looked through their messages. There was a long thread of text between Eric and Alex going back months, long before I got that wedding invitation. As I started reading, my world began to fall apart. The messages showed something I never could have imagined. Eric and Alex had been having an affair. They had been secretly meeting and sending each other passionate messages. Worst of all, Eric had fallen for her. He even suggested that maybe her marriage to Luke was a mistake and that they should be together. In one message, sent just weeks before the wedding, I can't keep hiding this anymore. I want to be with you, not her. I can't keep pretending. And then Alex replied with something that made my blood run cold. We can't do this. Luke will never accept it. And my family will hate me. I'm scared you'll say something at the wedding. It's better if you don't come. At that moment, everything became crystal clear. The real reason Eric wasn't invited to Alex's wedding wasn't because Luke had an issue with him or because of a limited guest list. Alex was afraid Eric would confess everything at the wedding that he would reveal their affair and destroy her new life with Luke. I felt sick to my stomach. My own husband, the person I trusted more than anyone, had betrayed me in the worst possible way. 
with my own sister. And Alex, to protect herself, had lied to everyone, excluded me from the wedding, and covered up their dirty secret. Eric wasn't a victim of exclusion. He was a willing participant. And I, blinded by love and trust, had never suspected a thing. I couldn't hold back the tears. I ran to the bathroom and locked myself inside, my body shaking with anger and devastation. How could he do this to me? How could Alex, my own sister, betray me like this? All those fights and all the times I defended Eric to my family now felt so pointless. I was the only one who didn't know the truth. Eric came out of the shower and knocked on the door, asking if I was okay. I didn't answer. I sat on the floor, trying to keep my anger under control. When I finally opened the door, he looked at me with concern, but there was something in his eyes that made me think he knew I had found out. Do you want to tell me what's going on? I asked, trying to keep my voice calm, even though I was angry inside. Eric hesitated, and I could tell he was trying to come up with an excuse, a way to keep lying to me. I don't know what you're talking about, he said, his voice faltering. I laughed bitterly, picking up his phone and throwing it toward him. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I read everything. You and Alex. The affair. The lies. All of it. Eric's face went pale. He opened his mouth, as if to deny it, but then closed it again when he realized there was no way out. The silence that followed was deafening. How could you do this to me? I shouted, my voice finally breaking, cracked by the weight of everything I was feeling. My own sister, Eric. How could you betray me like this? He tried to step toward me, but I backed away, refusing to let him get any closer. I was filled with disgust, with rage. He didn't deserve to be near me. I didn't mean for this to happen. He started to say, but his words were empty. There was nothing he could say to make this better. He and Alex had ruined my trust, my family, and everything I cared about. I realized right then that there was no way back. I couldn't forgive him, and I couldn't move on with him. Our life together was built on lies, and I couldn't accept that. I didn't know what I would do next, but I knew for sure that our marriage was over. That night, I left the house. I didn't look back. I was heartbroken and devastated, but I knew I deserved better. It was raining heavily as I drove to Alex's house. The words I had read on Eric's phone kept echoing in my mind like a nightmare I couldn't escape. We can't do this. I'm scared you'll say something at the wedding. There was no more room for doubt. Eric and Alex had been having an affair and to cover up their betrayal. She manipulated everyone and pushed me away, including her husband, Luke. When I arrived at their house, the sound of the rain hitting the windshield felt like a prelude to the storm that was about to happen. I banged on the door, not caring about the late hour or the weather. The only thing that mattered was confronting her and exposing the truth. Alex opened the door her eyes widening with surprise when she saw me standing there. But I could see a hint of fear in her eyes. She knew something was wrong. What are you doing here? She asked nervously, trying to sound calm. I didn't waste any time. I had nothing to lose. I know about you and Eric. For a moment, her face went completely pale. The shock was clear on her face, but she quickly tried to act normal. She looked back into the house as if she wanted to slam the door in my face. But before she could, Luke appeared in the hallway. Who is it, Alex? Luke asked as he walked up to the door. I stepped inside without waiting for an invitation, determined to get the truth. Alex looked scared, and this time, she had a good reason. Luke, you need to hear this too. Alex and Eric have been having an affair. The silence in the room was heavy. Luke looked at me, bewildered, then turned to Alex, waiting for her to deny it. But Alex didn't say anything. She just stood there, paralyzed, as tears began to form in her eyes. What? What are you talking about? Luke stammered, turning back to me, hoping for an explanation that made sense. I found their messages. I said coldly, my voice unwavering. They've been hiding it for months. Alex and Eric have been sleeping together. Luke's face twisted in confusion, shock, and then dawning horror. He turned back to Alex, waiting for her to refute it, to tell him I was lying. But the silence was all the confirmation he needed. Is it true? He asked, his voice breaking, pleading for her to say no. The hesitation from Alex was answer enough. She began to cry, choking on her words. It was a mistake, Luke. I didn't want this to happen, but Luke wasn't listening anymore. 
His entire demeanor changed. The betrayal hit him like a punch to the gut, and the disbelief quickly turned into anger. You slept with him. His voice shook full of hurt. Alex nodded, tears running down her cheeks. That was all Luke needed to hear. He looked at her like she was a stranger, as if he had never known her. He stepped back and shook his head. Without saying anything else, he took out his phone and called his lawyer right in front of us. I want a divorce, he said, his voice flat and emotionless. It's over. Alex collapsed to the floor, sobbing, trying to grab onto Luke's arm, but he pulled away without even looking at her. Their marriage, their future, it was all gone in an instant. The truth had shattered everything. I stood there, feeling strangely detached. Alex's tears, her pleading, didn't stir any sympathy in me. She had destroyed everything, and now she was I turned and walked out of the house. The rain was still pouring as I made my way to my car, but I barely felt it. I had unleashed the truth, and now, for the first time in what felt like ages, I was free. Free from the lies, the betrayal, and the pain that had been suffocating me for so long. I drove home in silence. When I got there, Eric was waiting for me, his face filled with the dread of knowing what I had discovered. He didn't need to say anything. The moment I walked through the door, he knew. I'm leaving. Eric, I said, my voice steady and firm. Our marriage is over. He tried to say something, to explain or plead, but I didn't give him the chance. I packed my things, ignoring his apologies, and walked out the door. I wasn't just leaving our home. I was leaving behind a life that had been built on deceit. The months that followed were hard. Ending my marriage and dealing with my sister's betrayal was really hard for me, but I slowly started to rebuild my life. I moved into my own place, cut off all contact with Alex and Eric, and even stayed away from most of my family. I needed time to heal, focus on myself, and start fresh. I worked hard, and little by little, things began to get better. As time passed, I heard rumors about Alex and Eric from family members. Not long after everything fell apart, they ran away together to try to start a new life. But, like everything else between them, it didn't last. Alex got pregnant and Eric, feeling overwhelmed and unsure, left her. He left her alone, pregnant, and struggling. I heard that they were both in financial trouble, scraping by just to survive. But the truth was I didn't care anymore. Their problems no longer mattered to me. While they were stuck in their own mess, I had moved on. My career took off, and I achieved more success than I ever imagined. I built a life for myself that was better and stronger than the one I had left behind. Years later, when I had long since healed from the past, something unexpected happened. I met someone. He was kind, intelligent, and understanding, and we connected in a way I hadn't felt in a long time. Slowly, I let myself fall for him, allowing myself to open up to love again. But life has a strange sense of humor. After a few months of dating, I found out who he was. The man I had fallen for was none other than Luke, Alex's ex-husband. When I realized, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. The irony was almost too much to handle. Luke and I sat down and talked about everything, the past, the betrayal, the pain we had both endured. It turned out that we had more in common than I ever could have imagined. We had both been victims of Alex and Eric's lies. And somehow, after all those years, we had found each other. It wasn't about revenge. It wasn't about the past anymore. It was about two people who had been hurt finding comfort in each other. Little by little, we started to build something real, honest, and lasting. Alex and Eric were no longer part of our lives. Their mistakes were just distant memories. Luke and I had moved on and found love in an unexpected way. Together, we created a new beginning and a future based on trust, respect, and love. In the end, that was all that truly mattered. Second story. I've been dating my girlfriend for almost two years. She's my first girlfriend, and I'm her fifth. At the beginning, things were tough because she was still friends with her ex when we started dating. I didn't like it, and she promised to cut him off soon, saying he was toxic, but she was scared to have that conversation. Three months in, she was still texting him and even picking him up after work. I told her how I felt, and she apologized saying she would fix it. I didn't want to come off as controlling, so I decided to trust her. Five months later, 
I finally brought it up again, and she ended things with him over text, saying they shouldn't talk anymore. I thought everything was resolved. Then, three days before Christmas, I finished work late and wanted to see her before heading to my family for two weeks. I called her, but she refused to come out, saying it was late and her hair was wet. I thought she was joking, but she didn't want to meet up. I was sad but brushed it off. The next morning, she called and said her ex had called her and made her meet him outside. They hugged, and he gave her a Christmas gift, which she accepted. We had a big fight, and she hid some details from me at first. I trusted her, even though I should have questioned her stories. After a year, I started to have trust issues because of her past relationships. She began going out more with her friends, which I was okay with, but one night, she got really drunk and didn't want me to pick her up. The next morning, I saw a picture of her with four guys on her social media. When I asked her about it, she said it was fun, but didn't give me details. Eventually, she told me that one guy had been hitting on her all night and buying her drinks. Now I have major trust issues because of her past actions. She doesn't seem to fully understand how disrespectful she's been. After promising to do better, something new happens that makes me feel disrespected again. Every time we argue, she apologizes and says it won't happen again, but her words don't match her actions. I feel exhausted but don't want to throw away two years of our relationship. I know she can be better because she's empathetic and smart.